Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to show you a little feature that I don't see used very often but that can be very powerful when you want it or when you need it and that is the history log. So anytime we run something in Blender known as an operator, so basically anything whether that is adding an object, moving an object, editing a mesh, all of these things are operators and all of these operators that we run are stored in a list. So for example if I just say hit shift A add in a mesh and a will just choose a torus that is one operator so the act of adding in my object which was a torus is an operator as is the act of grabbing this torus and moving it along the x-axis so any one of these commands or operators as they're called I can go back and repeat if I want and we can do this a couple of different ways we can do it either from the toolbar here where you could see repeat last and history or we can press the F3 key, which will bring up the history, which you can see right now just has two things. So add torus. So I can go ahead and add that again. And then I could just simply repeat that translate command and it just moves it right back over to the other one. Or let's move it back this way. And now suddenly if I select this one, hit F3 and translate it back, it's gone back over there. And so as you can see, Within the history list, the most most recently used operator is at the top of the list and then, you know, sorted by date. So this is very, very handy because it allows us to do a lot of things. Like if we wanted to say add the torus, move it over here, and then we'll add another one, and then we'll add another one. So this could be used for any number of things, you know, to kind of speed up your workflow. But it actually gets a little bit better. Let's go ahead and just delete all of these toruses. Let's access the history. This time we'll do it from over here and we'll choose add torus. And this time let's just move it over like this. And then let's just say that we wanted to do this a bunch of times. So let's just hit shift R and that will repeat the last action used. So just like we can access the history, we can also just simply call the latest used operator, which in this case is translate by pressing shift R or this button right here. So repeat, repeat, repeat. And then maybe we want to move it back this way, then repeat, repeat, repeat. And this is very, very valuable. Now you may notice that in object mode, this doesn't seem all that good because really we're not actually getting that far. You know, we're not able to repeat two operators at the same time, but it becomes very valuable when we're in edit mode. For example, let's just go into edit mode. Our entire torus is selected. And so let's just hit shift D Z to lock it to the Z axis, move it up, and then left click. That was one operator. Even though I did three distinctly different things, I duplicated it, I moved it along an axis, and I constrained it to that axis. Even though those three things are technically different, they're all run as a single operator. And this is in part just due to the way that Blender uses some commands, where basically it's a short macro rather than a single command. And so now, if I wanted a whole bunch of these rings, since I just did that once and I did it all as a single command, I can now just hit shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R, and very quickly give me a whole bunch of rings in little to no time at all. And that is much faster than doing it one at a time. Now, you know, I can just undo this all the way and then it'd be something like this and something like this. I can maybe even get precise and just do each one uh, at an exact distance. But already you can see which one is clearly faster. So that's where it becomes pretty valuable is using that in edit mode. And again, you can use this for all kinds of different things. So I could use it for say extrude. So maybe I'll extrude this section, but maybe rather than only extruding in a straight line, maybe I'm going to extrude it say, well, let's see, let's just do, we'll do extrude. We'll talk, hit Z to untoggle it and then maybe we'll position it right here. And okay, so now we'll do something like that. And now we can just shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R, or maybe we wanna bring it out this way. We'll rotate it a little bit and then shift R. So you can see how it can become pretty powerful pretty quickly. Now, that was not the, the best demonstration of sorts as I uh, was losing my my thought process as I was going along, but I think you can see where it becomes pretty valuable. So just to recap, you can access your complete history list just by pressing F3, 
or you can find it over on the left side under history, and you can simply repeat the most recently used operator with repeat last or shift R. Now, one thing to note is if you look in the history list, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't store everything. And so you're not gonna have an unlimited history list. And I believe, although I'm not positive, that that history list is partially controlled by what mode you're in. So for example, if I run something like this, you can see it's gonna be in the history list. If I go into edit mode and then run it, okay, it's still in, in the history, but it does seem to clear out from time to time. And I don't know when it clears out. Just be aware that it's not a complete history list. It just gives you your most recently used operators. So there you go. A uh, quick tip on using the repeat last and the history command in Blender.